And before Anoop's talk, I'll be just walking you through quickly of the scale of problems we are solving at Tripling and how this end-to-end -end setup which we have done recently is helping us scale all this testing across our 30 plus products and 600 plus engineers globally. So I'll be walking you through the journey so far and then like all the new things which we are trying to do. Uh, so yeah, at Rippling we are trying to solve a 100 billion dollar plus problem. Sounds like a lot. Uh, but uh, this is something like we really feel like we'll be achieving in another like few years. Uh, so what is that problem looks like? So the problem is all about like all the administrative work at a company like which happens. Uh, usually the people who do this work end up spending 60% of their time doing all the manual repetitive work all, all day in the office and 40% of the time they just work on the strategic work which is actually needed to kind of like run the company forward. So what Rippling is trying to solve is like cut that 60% of the time to zero so that like everything when you run an office, all this employee data, everything runs automatically and you just bring your 40% to 100% so that in your company you can be more productive in terms of like uh, how you build strategies for your future. Uh, so yeah, the root of this problem we have discovered that is every system which is tied to employee data runs on like few of the like key elements like employee's name, address, uh, his salary and all these components. Now the problem in today's system is like in your offices you might be using like lot of systems for it. Like you might be using one software to kind of do the payroll, one software to do the insurance. Now your salary is in one system, your insurance data in another system and your employee data is in a third, maybe like something like greenhouse or something. Now what happens is like at the end of the day all these tools create like a huge ecosystem in your company which someone has to manage. And this becomes like much more problematic when a title changes. Like say you get promoted, you get transferred between departments, then someone has to do all those transfers manually. Like uh, if you are transferring from front-end engineering to back-end engineering or turning a full stack, you definitely need like access to much more repos, uh, something like AWS. All those things are taken care by like rippling software like automatically. So when we say like what's rippling, it connects everything to one single source of truth for your company. So all your company's admin needs to do is like go to Rippling, we have all these 500 connections available at their uh, like you can say disposal and through which like they can run the whole operations automatically and we have automation in place for everything so that all these repetitive work you do once and next time it's going to happen automatically. Now I'll talk a little bit about uh, where Rippling sits in this whole ecosystem. So for a, every company to function there are three major components. One is customer, second is operations and third is employee set of data. So uh, if you talk about these data, Salesforce has solved this problem for uh, your uh, customer system of record like all this marketing, all this data is centrally tied in a Salesforce DB. Operations, SAP is solving it and for uh, employee system of record there is nothing exists today in the market and Rippling is trying to bridge that gap uh, and yeah like we have built the system and did great so far. Uh, so if you compare like uh, in terms of like it's not a comparison between two platforms but showing how Rippling platform at the end works. So we have a employee database which is central. Now we have a outer layer to it which is called unity platform. So all your automations, all your permissioning, you have multiple kind of people in your org which need different level of accesses. All these are controlled centrally here and then the outside of it what exists is are internally built products which are like currently hovering around 35 in numbers and we are building many more. Uh, so this ecosystem you can consume is like whenever you buy an iPhone you get a phone and around which you get a like some native applications installed with it and then you will always need like third party apps. So that comes as a third layer that we also have very deep integrations with all these platforms which are available. So once you get hired like say for an example GitHub, it would automatically provision you to GitHub and then it will automatically like provision you also to Asana. Now if you are changing team in Asana, your team needs to be changed. All these things are really, really well mapped in Rippling itself. So your admin just need to set up this automation that if department this, do this, all those things happen magically. So yeah, that's the beauty of the platform. So just in summary, like it starts from employee graph, have a Rippling unity platform and then we have three major clouds, HR, IT and finance. Rippling is trying to cover all of them. So companies don't have to go anywhere else to manage their employees. And just quickly I'll talk another minute about our engineering. 
so uh, this is another like one crazy story so uh, silicon valley has this doctrine that you focus on one product if you don't focus on it you will fail but rippling is from the day zero we are running on a different path we know we are going to be a company which is building many more products and the platform the central core of engineering is built around that so any time we launch a new product we have like the central db available we have the central unity platform available so building apps on top of it is really really easy so for an example like recently we launched spend management which is like your corporate car management so brex is a company which is doing it from years in rippling we took almost just one year to build it out so that's the beauty of the unity platform centrally and yeah it's a engineering first company uh, this is very rare to see only company which has like 50% of the workforce more more of consists of engineers and globally it's sf based we have beautiful office in bangalore as well and yeah the problems which i'm going to talk and which will further link to our tech talk is now building these uh, products single handedly is very easy you focus on one problem you build it you test it well but building this 30 products which also talks to each other it become it makes the problem really really hard you change something in payroll systems now your insurance systems has to be updated so that way the problem is really challenging and that also comes to the testing part of it as well and the scale uh, scale is like for an example one of our product out of 30 payroll we are right now processing yearly payments of 10 billion dollars and this year end i think we will reach around 30 billion dollars like processing the payroll so yeah coming to our front end engineer specifically like why we are here so our tech stack right now is in react we are using react native for our mobile applications we are early adopters of react native as well we are using it from day zero and working out great for us we have a beautiful design system soon we are planning to also make it open source and in terms of open source today yesterday is the first plugin we have made open source it has like thousands of weekly downloads now so anu would be talking about it further that how it can help you like you can say Uh, centralize your uh, playwright test reports later on and yeah some of our colleagues are here uh, if later on if you want to talk to some of these and want to get to know more about rippling and our systems just talk to us and yeah i'll be passing on to anup who will be like talking more about the e2e framework we have kaun sa click kar raha hai next ye next hota hai ye previous hota hai yep am i audible awesome yeah so let's talk about more testing <laughs> so uh, the primary purpose of this talk is to walk you through the journey that rippling had adopting playwright microsoft's playwright for our uh, end to end testing workflow now uh, we're going to talk about uh, you know a lot about testing we're going to talk about uh, the problems that we face and how we actually solve them and then how all of these actually comes into our ci uh, subsystem right so yeah uh, i'm anu previndran and for the people who are looking at this uh, this is baga beach at goa parasailing highly recommended you it's a one time thing uh yeah and i i work in a team called front end platform uh, what that team does is primarily has one purpose it is to make the web ecosystem at rippling much better right and we do that by improving two things one is ux and the second one is dx right and so we have uh, a very uh, mature design system which is powering our product experiences and for the dx part we work on all things uh, which enable us to take one line of code from which the developer writes to the end user right which would be uh, bundling uh, deployment strategies uh, diagnostic systems like linting uh, type checks unit tests and then end to end tests right yeah so we look at the different sections of what the stock is supposed to be first we'll talk why right i mean end to end testing is the you know, from unit testing is the next level of testing how does uh, end to end testing enable us to write better code sleep better right night right uh, that's the best part of it and then we'll talk about why play right right because it uh, plugs in exactly to our workflow in in a dx methodology which is extremely easy for to follow and then the second one is we 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 look at the uh, dx part of it in the phases of test right the first thing you would do is author a test the second thing is execution the third is debugging and the fourth is actually reporting around testing right uh, so we'll we'll uh, approach dx in that way uh, now uh, we do seeding uh, via apis but we migrated that to debugging via data is snapshots so seeding is like let's say you are writing a test to check uh, if or, you know, uh, order cancellation flow is working perfectly or not right but for that you have to first have a customer signed in uh, uh, create an order and then only you can actually run that test right so the, those prerequisites our seeding refers to 
uh, and the uh, last part would be the open source part of it like we wanted to actually give back we had so much fun working on this building this that we wanted to actually uh, give back in any way that we can so we found a problem we solved it and we actually open sourced it out right it's been around the ecosystem for some time so we'll talk a little bit more about it right so this is the development workflow uh, you know branching methodology that we have at uh, rippling so we follow a trunk based approach what that means is whatever is in master is expected to be stable and ready to go to product at a moment's notice right what that means is we need uh, very good levels of diagnostic systems gate keep whatever goes into master right so for that uh, we make sure uh, we have uh, you know as i said uh, unit testing and then high degrees of end to end testing so we have about 600 uh, press developers across six plus time zones contributing to it so yeah it's a highly uh, fast paced environment for when it comes to code so yeah why playwright um, so uh, as i said so uh, we were actually starting to do with selenium but then we did a analysis in terms of scale and then we actually wanted to migrate to playwright uh, we'll talk a lot more about details uh, and then one thing i wanted to be very clear is we're not doing a comparison study between different frameworks this is not a framework war kind of a thing we just going to say how this plugs into our ecosystem and it was perfect for us so uh, to tell you a little bit about the reasons right uh, i didn't want to have like a lot of lines of features and stuff like that what i did was i created a word cloud and based on the size you can actually detect that uh, how important it is how impactful it is and based on the feedback we got from the developers right so the first thing you can see is auto wait which means no more uh, you know timeouts like you don't write any more timeouts just like in selenium where you wait for 500 milliseconds for something to come out and hope it comes up no so you actually wait for uh, an element to be on the screen and then it actually provides right so by default it actually does that with auto wait and web assertions then we'll talk about the crown jewel here which is the trace file which we'll cover in a later slide which is i would say is one of the best things about playwright when it comes to debugging um, then yeah obviously we have documentation it's very good documentation but yeah uh, the community is still growing we have uh, screenshot testing yeah out of the box types to support and then we have the browser installations and the setup right is extremely extremely easy so we'll talk a little bit more about those so we'll we'll start with the first test right the first phase is actually authoring a test right how do you actually run it uh, write a test so, uh, and the biggest problem with e2e test is when a new developer actually comes in they may not have experience writing an end-to-end -end test or they don't have uh, you know very much uh, knowledge about the syntax of playwright test right so the cold start to adoption would be a little high so one of the things that playwright actually provides us is a code gen what happens is uh, the first thing we ask the developer to do is let's run this code run this line of code on the web app right what this does is it opens an inspector for you and a browser instance just go there just uh, do whatever you have to and then you would see at the right side the code actually getting generated right so the developer is able to see okay uh, there's a one to one mapping between the interaction that i'm doing on the browser and um, this is how the syntax actually works right so navigation clicks all those things they are able to understand it uh, very perfectly right now the next part is vs code comes with uh, uh, sorry playwright team has built a beautiful vs code plugin which right now is getting more and more features and now it's at a level where you don't need the command line at all to run the test debug the test nothing of that sort right so again uh, the uh, vs code plugin has the record new uh, feature by which you can do the same thing on the plugin itself right now uh, we have all uh, faced this issue where uh, a component is actually uh, breaking the css and the product is uh, the user is not able to actually go into the product uh, interact with it because of some css issues or css is not even loading right you just see the html and the syntax but the tests actually pass because there is no visual testing nothing of that sort so what we do here is we have a screenshot testing framework uh, within uh, playwright and you have this uh, when when you write this uh, line of code in the test what happens is it generates a screenshot and then every future executions just compares with that right at a pixel level uh, and then playwright not only supports screenshots but it supports binary data text files everything right so it's able to compare anything that you have to. and at the same time we we, we use the officially supported play uh, docker image which is version right so what that have, what that means is if you are using 1.26.0 uh, you use the same uh, image uh, in docker and then when you have to upgrade just upgrade this it takes care of system dependencies it takes care of the browsers to download everything 
So in two steps, you are able to completely build the whole, uh, upgrade the whole system. Right? Now uh, let's look at the second phase, which is the execution of test. Now execution is a bit more trickier because you have local execution and then you have the CI execution. Both levels of debugging is there. So we'll, we'll start with the uh, browser support, right? Where to actually execute? So again, uh, Playwright has this covered here. We just have to run npx Playwright install. It downloads the correct browser binaries that we need based on the version of Playwright you have, and it just installs it and it's ready to run, right? So when you upgrade it, run this again, and it actually uh, detects again and downloads the new binaries for you. So uh, now, because you have multiple browsers and it's already supported, you can actually put in your Playwright config saying that, okay, I want to run it both on Chromium and WebKit. And by default, it actually runs it. And you can provide in the CLI uh, command line again that uh, I only want to run it on Chromium. So you have that option also, right? Now, the next part is, uh, you know, actually running the test. So it's a single command. It's like npm Playwright test. And then you have flavors to it where you provide headed, then a Chrome. Uh, then a browser instance is opened and you are able to see what that test actually does. Um, and then you have other flavors like debug and then you can run one uh, single test, a folder of tests, all those things. It's the same command. And again, the VS Code plugin comes in and you get a beautiful UI, interactive UI where you can see the different tests. You can just press that play button. Uh, the first one is for running and the second one is to uh, trigger debugging. Right? So we'll talk about debugging later. Now, one of the biggest problems that we were uh, facing when we were actually scaling, right? we had multiple products, was let's say there is an insurance test which was failing and then payroll PRs were getting blocked. Right? It's not because of the code that you have in the PR, but it's because of something else. Right? So we wanted to build a system where we don't block the PR uh, unless and until it's because of your code. Right? So, we, uh, so we had two specifications on this. One, we needed developers to be able to map that between the source file and the test. And the second one is we wanted to detect the relevant tests on CI itself and run only those tests. Right? So based on that, we actually build a system where uh, the first step is actually detecting which are the files changed compared to master. So we know exactly which files. The second one is just the mapping JSON which the developers maintain. So based on this, we know uh, the only changes that has run is the payroll test. So we detect and uh, list down the payroll test. Now that we have a list of tests to run, next part is actually executing it across. Right? So, yeah. So, uh, at a scale, uh, let's say about 500 tests or something, you will not be running these tests in one machine. You will be running this across multiple machines, right? So, when that happens, uh, Play, Playwright uh, provides a sharding mechanism where you can actually say, okay, one third of the tests run on this machine, uh, the second third, and the third third in uh, some other machines, right? So, the problem here is, uh, let's say there is a group of tests which are extremely fast. And there are a group of other tests which are extremely slow, right? So let's say in this case, batch zero takes about three minutes to execute, and batch one takes ten minutes to execute, right? The overall uh, step actually takes ten minutes to execute, right? It's not efficient enough. Unless and until we have that data on how much duration a test takes, we won't be able to kind of batch it in a proper way. So what we did was, uh, what we did was, we actually uh, built a custom bin uh, custom pipeline based on bin packing algorithm, where we took the execution time of the previous test. And based on that, we been packed it uh, in an efficient way for uh, parallelize, uh, parallelly executing these tests. For example, in this case, we have three tests, right? The first test takes five minutes, and we know this because of the previous run. Uh, and the uh, second test takes three minutes, and third test takes one minute, right? So if we batch in this way, which is the sequential way, uh, the overall time is actually eight minutes, right? But when we actually do a bin packing based on the data we have, we are able to actually uh, reduce the time by more than uh, to five minutes, right? Now let's go to the third part, which is again debugging, which also has two aspects, which is local and CI. So um, in debugging test, there are majorly three ways in local. One, you actually provide the flag, which is PW debug or uh, the debug flag. What happens is a Playwright inspector actually pops up, which is very similar to your uh, very similar to your code gen, which actually pops up, right? And it actually stops at that particular line of code. And you're able to debug why this is happening on the browser, right? Uh, you have the same thing. And then what happens is uh, you can use it like the debugger, the JavaScript debugger that we have. Line by line, you are able to traverse through the test. And then you're able to see the updates on the Chrome itself, right? So, and the uh, third part is uh, await page.pos, which is like execute till then and just stop. 
and just open the browser for me we are actually proceed from there right. Now uh, on CI uh, we have this beautiful HTML report which comes in which is generated by playwright for us which has three major things here uh, one is the screenshot of exactly when the text actually failed the uh, second one is trace which we will go into a little deeper next and then third is the video itself the video playback of the whole test uh, and then if you have any console messages in your test uh, th they actually show up here also right. So this is some uh, this is a use case where it is happening on the CI and you need a report which actually gives you everything right. Now this is the crown jewel I would say of playwright which is uh, the trace where on the left side you see every single step that has happened on the test on the top you see a film strip of all the screenshots that is happening over the test and on the right you have console uh, the browser console you have the network tab and the source is the source code of the test itself right and in the con uh, network tab you are able to see all the headers it handles cores it handles HTTPS so you are able to see all the headers it is much easier to debug and in the center it is just not an image it is a DOM snapshot so you are able to interact with it you can actually go to the debugger and look at it uh, in case mostly in the case of when you wanted better select mode testing about that right. Now we go to the final part which is the most overlooked part I would say is reporting right how does a developer actually reach uh, from a bug to the reason of the bug right. So something broke on CI uh, does the developer have to go to the Jenkins pipeline scrounge through the logs how does it actually translate to that right. So that is something that we wanted to really minimize the number of hops between that. So we started with uh, you know we, we put the HTML report on S3 and we started sending links to it. So that step is not there where you have to go to the pipeline nothing of that sort of direct thing right and we also started adding documentation about the pipeline and debugging particularly this step uh, on the github comment itself right. But then we wanted to also notify the user that something has broken so we send a slack message uh, with the direct reports again so only on failure you get a slack message and you are able to uh, directly go to that report and debug uh, and then we also have this automatic detection of the DRI. So uh, if a test fails on master we actually ping the tag the right person in here and we are able to actually take it from there. Now we have videos uh, we have this video generated screenshot and everything now uh, one of the things that we can do with it is we can actually share it with people who are non engineering also right because uh, onboarding a onboarding a, a, a customer to play role is the same right. So what we have done is we have created a dashboard over the data that we have from play right and we have uh, put all the videos uh, in the retools dashboard. So they can actually share this to people to onboard faster right uh, how does a uh, payroll uh, customer get onboarded we can just share this video and they will have to slow it down because play it becomes extremely fast when it comes to this and this is a uh, dashboard that we had built. So the overall pipeline looks something like this right we check out the code we uh, deploy front end and back end and then we have a DB right which is connected to it. We select the test efficiently uh, we batch the test for uh, you know parallel execution and then we run it in docker right we can do uh, the using the official docker image for playwright and we analyze the reports to detect if there are failures if there are failures we send slack messages we send the report links uh, directly uh, and then uh, uh, we uh, close the uh, PR itself right. So yeah so the last uh, uh, this uh, so the last part of the efficiency uh, section is this uh, we actually started seeding the test using database uh, snapshots. Now this actually uh, allowed us to reduce our uh, test durations by more than 40 percent. So uh, let us say a test takes about 4 minutes the first 2 minutes are actually just setting up the data and then the uh, last 2 minutes is actually running the data right. So we removed the part where we needed to set up the data before the test and we moved it to a database level we will talk about that a little bit more. So this is the exact pipeline which generates that snapshot for us. So we just take a, a, a snapshot of that. Now uh, so previously we had API seeding what we did was we actually moved to uh, database seeding how we did that was uh, we had uh, custom helpers built in the back end where you could run it uh, at an interval right about 2 hours 3 hours and stuff like that and then it actually generated all the test data that was required uh, database data that was required right. So let us say uh, you need to test uh, if a person has admin privileges first thing you would create a company would onboard an employee to it and then give admin privileges. Now uh, with this you already have that set uh, stored in the database uh, just like in the pipeline. So you can actually go back uh, 
you can actually uh, just have to sign in and execute that test everything else is set up for you directly right so looking at this uh, pipeline uh, back so we have the deploy test environment and then we have the db snapshot reset just before the test so that we are able to execute it completely now we go into the last part which is the rippling oss we we want we had so much fun working with this we were able to build exactly what we wanted that we wanted to actually give back and we were looking at problems that were not too big for us to you know that we had to spend a lot of time and not too small that did not have an impact so we found uh, a problem where um, uh, when you actually run it parallelly across machines they created different reports there is no single report which actually comes to you so we wanted to actually build a solution we looked at how playwright works and we found that uh, what they do is they have a json in every index index or html file they gzip it they change it to base 64 uh, url base 64 uh, encoding and then send it across so what we did was we took every report converted it back to the json wrote a custom logic to merge the whole json and then created a new index or html and embedded the new json in it so and then we uh, open sourced it it was mostly over a weekend we just built it and we are uh, and then it started gaining traction now we have elastic uh, charts and vercel actually using it and we are uh, you know committed to actually supporting the next versions of this thing also uh, yeah thank you uh, that's my place from my side